Welcome to this special edition of America's Now. He went from a very strong Minister of Defense to Nobel Peace Prize winner. If the peace agreement signed in Colombia holds in time, Juan Manuel Santos will be remembered as the person who ended an armed confrontation that began in 1964. Santos's popularity in the last leg of his term is not high, but he knows that national reconciliation comes at a price. He sat down with our correspondent Michelle Begay for an interview and talked about the future of a country. The peace is not uh, constructed from one day, one day to another. This has been a very violent country. 53 years of war, uh, you just don't disappear the sentiments and what was happening in 24 hours. It took Colombian President Juan Manuel Santos and his team of negotiators four years to achieve a peace deal with the largest Colombian rebel group known as FARC. The peace agreement was signed on September 27, 2016. The world watched as President Santos and FARC leader Rodrigo Londoño ended over half a century of conflict. Como jefe de Estado de la patria que todos amamos, les doy la bienvenida a la democracia. Uh, I hope that uh, people realize and history realizes that we have a better country today than we had some eight years ago. Uh, this is something that any head of state, any leader would want to say after he finishes his term. As Juan Manuel Santos approaches the end of his second term, he agreed to a sit-down interview with us to reflect on Colombia's past seven years. First of all, this peace agreement is very unique. It's the first time that a guerrilla group uh, gives up uh, their arms and accepts a transitional justice. This had never occurred before with any guerrilla group, with any armed conflict. Colombia's peace agreement has been lauded for its balance between socioeconomic reforms, security, and victims' rights. According to the Kroc Institute for International Peace Studies at the United States University of Notre Dame, the Colombian Accord is ranked among the top 10 most comprehensive agreements signed in the last 25 years. But the implementation has also been rocky. <laughs> Delays and challenges have arisen through the process, something that the president dismisses. This has been marginal. It's, it's uh, simply uh, an excuse to criticize the process. A delay of one week or two weeks or two months in a war of 53 years is nothing, nothing. It's irrelevant. So the critics always try to find excuses to criticize the agreement. One of the most vocal critics, former President Álvaro Uribe Vélez. Pedimos a las Naciones Unidas His main argument is that the accord fails to guarantee justice Colombian. for victims of the FARC. Under the deal, FARC commanders can avoid spending a single day in jail if they confess their war crimes. This, say negotiators, is so that victims can be guaranteed the truth of what happened. There's a transitional justice, and it's called transitional justice precisely uh, because it was created to help the solution of armed conflicts, where the justice is not applied in a normal way. The justice is applied to facilitate a peace agreement. I understand many people are not happy with that, but it's the price we have to pay for peace. And uh, the m most responsible of the worst crimes will be judged and condemned and sanctioned. So there is no impunity. Some people, like the former president, would have liked more justice. But again, it's the price of peace. Justice through jail time would be out of the picture. Santos has argued that a perfect justice would not have allowed for peace. Of course it's not perfect. A peace agreement is imperfect by definition because you have to make transactions and uh, some people will not be happy. That is normal, but it's a good agreement. It was the best agreement possible.
But Colombia's challenges don't end with a peace deal. According to conflict monitoring NGO Indepaz, this year alone, criminal groups have killed 50 social leaders across the country. So I can guarantee you that these, uh, what has happened is the, sort of the remnants of this war because usually it's in the areas where the drug traffickers uh, were present, uh, areas where illegal mining was present, and there's a fight among criminal bands to see who takes over. So it's, it's a, the price of transition, but the government is very much aware and uh, taking action to stop this because we ha have the responsibility of guaranteeing the safety, especially of the people in the zones that were in a way liberated by the war. The government also has the responsibility of ensuring the safety of FARC guerrillas as they step into civilian life. During a failed peace negotiation with the FARC in the 1980s, the guerrilla's political party was killed off by right-winged paramilitaries supported by the government. This time, the government promises the FARC's entrance into politics will be different. They will battle it out in the voting booths. Of course, they're competitors. Uh, we don't agree with what the FARC believes. We agree and support that they can express their beliefs and do politics without violence and without arms. That's the whole purpose of the peace agreement. But of course, we don't like what the FARC uh, has as a, a vision for the country. We, we think it's a wrong vision. They have a vision uh, very much like the Venezuelan vision, and that has been a failure. As defense minister from 2006 to 2009, Juan Manuel Santos loyally implemented President Álvaro Uribe's strong security policies. Deadly blows to the FARC insurgents weakened them from an estimated 16,000 rebels in 2001 to 7,000 by 2010, according to government statistics. As candidate for the presidency in 2010, Santos ran as the chosen successor to Uribe, who would continue his policies. Many believed he would bring a forceful end to the guerrillas. But on inauguration day, Santos began to hint that the end of the conflict could also come through dialogue. A cualquier conversación que busque la erradicación de la violencia y la construcción de una sociedad más próspera, equitativa y justa. To do this, President Santos had to mend relations with neighboring Venezuelan President Hugo Chavez, who had an affinity with the Colombian insurgents. A la nueva agresión del gobierno de Uribe, un gobierno guerrerista. Colombia and Venezuela had broken diplomatic ties. Left wing Chavez and Colombian right-winged Álvaro Uribe were staunch enemies. So only three days after taking office, Santos re-established diplomatic ties with Venezuela. With Chávez on his side, Santos approached the FARC to negotiate. Y la construcción de una paz estable y duradera. When formal talks began in 2012, Venezuela and Chile became accompanying parties of the dialogue. But Venezuela's ongoing economic and political turmoil under President Nicolás Maduro has led to a crisis that is spilling over the Venezuela-Colombia border. Cerrar la frontera con Colombia. Tensions have built as Maduro accuses Colombia of waging an attack on Venezuela's economy. With a Colombian peace agreement signed in 2016, Santos's view on Venezuela's leadership has shifted. For us, for Colombians, uh, what happens in Venezuela is of tremendous importance. We are probably the country that has to win or lose the most with what happens in Venezuela. So we are the most interested in a peaceful, negotiated solution. We've been trying to push for that, unfortunately with no success but we will keep trying. And, and uh, how does it affect Colombia? Where we are already uh, feeling the effect. Thousands and thousands of Venezuelans are coming to Colombia to seek a better life. Uh, they are hungry, they don't have opportunities. And so this is something that affects us, of course. 
Colombia has been the United States' strongest ally in the South American region. As drug trafficking fueled the armed conflict in the 1990s, Colombia began to work closely with the United States through a security strategy known as Plan Colombia. Colombia has been very careful of maintaining a bipartisan relationship and support from the U.S. and that's why we have been probably the best allies of the U.S. for many, many years. As most South American governments joined Venezuela, Bolivia, Brazil and Ecuador towards the left, Colombia's conservative and right-wing policies were the perfect partner for the United States. But Santos has managed to remain above the ideological battles waged in the Western Hemisphere, it's an honor showing a more diplomatic Thank approach to international politics. We have many options for Venezuela. When it's United States President Donald says, Trump you know, said military world, intervention would not be discarded as a solution to the political crisis in Venezuela, President, President Santos was quick to voice his well, disapproval. Well, I told uh, the President Trump and I told Vice President Pence, uh, military intervention in Venezuela will not be accepted by Colombia or uh, any other country in the region. This would be a mistake. Uh, so as good friends, we also tell each other the truth when we don't agree. President Trump has a rolled back policies nice that Obama had started with but, Cuba. Uh, He's threatened Venezuela. How does that impact the region? It, it has a negative impact because uh, the uh, situation with uh, Venezuela, with Cuba, was something that uh, the region as a whole is interested in, in having a good way out, uh, not no confrontation. Uh, we celebrated very much what happened with Cuba, the approach that President Obama uh, made with the Cuban government, and uh, the fact that this did not continue, we'll, we're all sad about it. Uh, so it's not the step in the correct direction. What is taking a step in the right direction? Colombia's economy. Despite the global drop in oil prices, Colombia is forecasted to grow 2.3% in 2017, above the 1.1% average for Latin America according to the International Monetary Fund. With peace, Latin America's fourth largest economy is looking to showcase its potential for investors. There are opportunities for agricultural development, infrastructure growth, and even prospects for Colombia to become a South American tech hub. First, by the mere fact of ending the war, uh, investment will increase and is already increasing. Tourism is increasing at a very fast rate. There are areas of the country that were uh, not in a way developed at all because the state could not go and build infrastructure because the conflict was there. Now we can go and build infrastructure, very rich areas. Regardless of positive indicators, the country's perception of their president has been less than ideal. An August poll showed President Santos's approval rating was at 25%. Corruption scandals have hit many of Colombia's politicians. Brazilian construction company Odebrecht is accused of using bribery and corruption to secure around 100 projects in 12 countries. In Colombia, Santos's 2010 campaign received those illegal funds, allegedly without his knowledge. Lamento profundamente y pido excusas a los colombianos por este hecho bochornoso que nunca, nunca I am supporting those investigations. I think we are the government that has um, advanced the most in these investigations of all the countries that have been touched by this uh, corruption. I think it's something that is good for, for Colombia in the sense that it's not new. The corruption comes from a long way back. But now for the first time in our country, we are having results. And this is a good thing. It's painful, but it's good because it recovers the confidence of the people in their institutions. And that's why we are pushing the different uh, judicial organizations to, to go to the, the after these people and, and no matter who they, who they touch. Fortunately also, so far, uh, people in my administration uh, at a high level 
have not been uh, tainted. Um, if they're tainted, they should go to jail. This last year of investigations and scandals throughout Colombian politics contrasts drastically with the closing of 2016, when President Santos received the Alfred Nobel Peace Prize for his efforts to end Colombia's armed conflict. Back at home, Colombians were still trying to piece together if the deal would happen. During a referendum where the peace deal was put to a vote by the Colombian people, citizens voted against the accord. No me rendiré. The government Seguiré and FARC scrambled to renegotiate final details. Ahora invitamos a firmar el nuevo acuerdo de paz. And in November of 2016, Colombia, a new Manuel and Santos final Calderón. deal was passed. Firmado hoy el nuevo acuerdo, la implementación podrá arrancar tan pronto el Congreso refrende los acuerdos. Espero que según el procedimiento establecido, la refrendación sea aprobada en el curso de la semana entrante. Presidential elections will be held in Colombia in 2018. Although the race is still too early, both the Santos administration and the FARC prefer candidates that will guarantee the execution of the peace agreement as is. Would I have the, uh, the mental tranquility is that whoever comes into power cannot undo what we have done. This peace process is irreversible. Nobody in his right mind will come in August of next year and says, Let's go back, because now people, especially in the regions that lived and suffered the conflict, they're so happy with what is happening that they will not allow it. But at the same time, legally, in our constitution, we already have a, a constitutional amendment that says no government can approve laws that will go against the compliance of the peace agreement. While some could say the Colombian president achieved everything he set out to do, Santos has a more critical stand. Is there anything you feel that was left undone? Oh, many things, many things. Many reforms uh, that we should have made uh, which were difficult because uh, Congress didn't accept them. Our, our judicial system, for example. Uh, I would have liked to do much more uh, in our social indicators, uh, even though we advance a lot, we still have too many poor people um, in reducing the differences between the rich and the poor. We were able to, uh, to change the trend because we were a country that grew, but at the same time the differences also grew. We, we changed that trend, but we have a long way to go. In terms of the peace, we still have a group that is still up in arms. We're negotiating with them, the ELN. Um, I would have hoped to have peace with them. So there's many things still to go, to do, but uh, I feel quite uh, happy with what we achieved. Although peace Pero talks may march slowly, President Santos China. still has a year left in office. <laughs> 53 years of armed conflict doesn't end overnight, but crucial decisions are made within moments.